right uh, good evening i go on everybody so let's start actually i was waiting for few minutes uh, hope since it's still some people joining i know there are some issues is power even at the moment uh, we don't have power here uh, i'm just running on my backup but anyway since uh, we cannot wait for long time let's start so in today's session i'm going to talk on the in text citation and referencing as the part of the training for the the, the and especially for the post graduates who has registered for this course um i'm actually attached to the department of zoology university of sujawardenapur um i have been doing actually this or similar um, presentations as well as even workshops almost all the universities in sri lanka and also even the research institutes um because i know the how important it is uh to familiarize especially the postgraduate students um with the references and uh, citations because i know that uh, most of students especially the the undergraduates as well as post graduates they are really struggling with the references um because it is of course uh, very confusing with lot of styles lot of uh, different formats um uh, it definitely a uh, really confusing so um we'll try to uh have a sort of a discussion here right so if you have any question in time you can stop me and and ask right i mean i don't know any everything about the references but we can share our knowledge i have been using uh, i mean um, especially the software uh technology to do the references for i mean even for my undergraduate the thesis long time ago so i can share some of that experience with you right so having said that uh, uh, let's start directly uh, on the session right so what are we going to discuss here so this is what we are going to uh, talk here so what is syntax citation and what is reference is it something same or different a little bit on the plagiarism um with some examples and and what sort of information to be cited and what are those different reference styles or bibliographic styles and some examples for different um, reference styles and we'll talk a little bit if time permits on the the searching information uh, from databases so sometimes the other scholarly uh, sites something like research gate or uh, google scholar and and very brief introduction to the, the bibliographic software or bibliographic management or reference management software um i believe that we have a different audience here from humanities management to sciences to medical sciences so it is extremely dif difficult for us to be like uh, provide everything in common but i try my best to uh, provide something common for everybody right um so before going into the the session let me uh let just do some a uh, small survey i'm sharing a link see whether if you can uh, go to that link and if it asks for a code please provide this code i right, just to know what is your present situation how do you feel about references right if you can uh let me right. 
right so both you and me can see now the your uh, the level of understanding at least how you feel about the reference we'll take one minute just to be interactive as well you know Please do it quickly as possible, since we don't want to have time to waste. So we have at least uh, all together 57 participants, which means at least 54 here, uh, apart from me my tablet and the BFTS computer. <clears throat> so still, lot of you still to answer, but uh, from the analysis, what I see is uh, the majority is looking for something, uh, especially on the, just to know a little bit on the reference software followed by the the second one is the it seems that the some people st still are struggling with the formatting references right and uh, some people want to know about the plagiarism and how to avoid right so so this is typical you know in many cases those who uh, attended my session uh, they pretty much want to know about the reference software and also uh, just to get rid of some of the confusions about the references right so let's stop the poll here um, but if the others want it still they can uh, provide their ideas right okay let's move on um, so what does this really mean by the citation of references, especially in a scholarly work, right? And so it is all about, there are actually two components in a, a, a reference or a citation. The first one is the in-text citation. That is the citation that you will have in the text, the body of the text. In many cases, it's the author's last name and the, the year of publication, we call the author date system. Right. So that is the in-text citation. Then the second part is the reference list, the full list of references or the complete list of references. Right. So the, the, any combination of in-text citation and reference list we call as the citation. Right. And the, the references, some people, it's it almost same, the citation and references, but uh, actually the citations are a part of the reference because these references are usually is the complete list. So that's the difference, but it's, you can use both interchangeably, right? So why we need a citing? So that is the most important thing. Acknowledging others working, our writing is, it's very important, especially the scholarly work. We all are scholars. So we need to acknowledge the other's work, right? And when you are communicating to the others, right? So this process of acknowledgement is actually the citing, right? The process of acknowledgement, the others, ideas in particular. So that is the citing, right? And there is another two words that the reference versus bibliography. The references, usually it's a list of references. In some cases, it's called the work cited. And the bibliography. So the reference list is the, the, the full list that you use for your work, maybe for your thesis or for a research paper. But bibliography is the, the everything that you use for your, maybe for your research or assignment. 
right? That not all what you have downloaded or you, um, that you have will be using in your work, right? So everything that you have with you is the bibliography and whatever from that that you use for your work is the references. So hope that is clear, right? And now the question, of course, you, you might already know, but uh, why do we have to use the references, right? Um, the, the very first and very uh, important thing is that um, because if the information that you are providing, I mean, when you are communicating to others, if the information that you provide to the reader, it is not, if it is not yours, and then you have to tell them that it is not your idea, but you are putting someone else's idea, right? And that provides a lot of uh, things to the reader, right? And that show where you got that facts from, right? So, because if someone else or the, the reader wants to know a little bit more, so then they can find, right? I'm very basic that you have, the reader can find where that information comes from, right? The second thing, use other people's work to support our own argument, right? So in this way, we are supporting our own arguments. So otherwise we provide evidences, like for example, in the, in the discussions, in the results sometimes, for many cases in the discussions, we provide the, the, the reference to others. It is not only me that someone else has also has something, found something similar. So that is, that support your argument, right? And, and also you can give some sort of analysis of others work, right? And more importantly, you can give some uh, more clear idea or the definitions or explanations uh, using this reference because someone else might have properly defined the terms, then you can communicate that to the reader, but that definition is not yours. It's coming from someone else, right? Right, the last but most important is make you more scholarly, right? This is the most important thing actually is for a postgraduate and then and especially the researchers, how credible you are as a researcher and whether you are scholarly or not, right? So if you are using the most recent and most uh, read or most important uh, references in your work, at least to relate it to your work, then that the reader knows that you are very confident or you are um, a, a scholar. I mean, you have read a lot and, and you haven't missed anything and that really give a credibility, especially if you are writing a paper and it goes to a reviewer. The reviewers are usually the experts in that field. So they have read pretty much all the, the, the important references so that you cannot mix miss these important um, publications. So it's very important that um, you have all these in your, so that give a very good or a good credibility for a researcher, right? So that is very important. So what to be cited and what not to be? I mean, there's no anything called what not to be, but at least the very common facts, for example, the, the World War, to happen in this year, 1945, that everybody knows, right? And this, other than that, anything else that has to be cited. And this is, I mean, most of the cases, Tugan struggle, struggle actually, because uh, uh, they don't know what to be cited, right? Uh, we try to uh, cover these things, right? And here, I have given one example, right? Sri Lanka ranked top country for travel in 2019, but right, but not now, right? Now, this kind of information is really important, of course, if it's especially a traveler who want to come to Sri Lanka, so they'll be really interested on in reading this one. But the important for them is to who said this. Right? So that is the important because they will decide whether to go to Sri Lanka or not based on the so who said this, right? And then how you know and who said this? So this statement come from Lonely Planet, one, one of the, the, the website, you know, uh, do a lot of reviews. I mean, the, 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 the 
anyone can do reviews on any hotels or destination. So, so it's very, very credible source. I mean, uh, of course, it's um, not very scholarly, but some credible source. So this is where you have to provide this, uh, um, the, the citation, right? Now, the other thing is how authentic this information is, is more important, right? So for example, lonely parent, I mean, scholarly work, perhaps you might not use this kind of information because this might not come in from authentic sources. And the other thing, something like a Wikipedia, right? Um, can we cite Wikipedia? Right. Um, well, of course we can, but uh, especially the kind of scholarly work you are writing for papers, we sometimes or most of the time we um, avoid this kind of a, a sites like a Wikipedia because it can be edited by the general public, right? They are not really authentic information. We are not 100% sure. Of course, there are some internal uh, verification, but uh, they can be edited by many people. So it is not a credible sources. <clears throat> so how you can find credible sources? So best thing to look at is to look at the domain name, right? This domain name, and that gives some indication whether that source is actually a, some credible or not, right? Like here that is jp.ac.lk, if it is as a .edu, that is education, US, many US universities, they use edu, but uh, British and some universities use ac, .goe, government, .mil, military, right? .org, in many cases like uh, faoorg, .org, so these are credible sources, at least uh, we can guess they are credible. So dot coms, dot nets, these kind of things usually we don't um, really use for scholarly work unless really necessary, right? Right. <clears throat> now, if you don't cite or if you passing your information or someone else's work as you own, then it is called as plagiarism, right? So this plagiarism now considered as serious offense in the academia, academic writing, and then even the assignments or theses, what kind of academic writing, the plagiarism is considered as a severe offense. Uh, sometimes you can even fail, right? Like even the postgraduate degrees, if it is a lot of plagiarized, you might even lose your degrees. It can be very serious and it depends on how much you have copied from somewhere else, right? So, so it is a serious concern. Now, um, I will come to this one later on, um, right? Uh, before moving into the next session, we have a small video. Um, we watch that one and then come back just to give a some idea about the uh, plagiarism. Mark, I need to talk to you about the research paper you submitted. What do you mean? My paper was good. The plagiarism detection software showed multiple passages that were similar to text found on the internet. I don't know what you are talking about. I typed the paper myself. You may have typed the paper yourself, but you used words and ideas from other people without giving them credit. You presented the ideas as your own. That is plagiarism. I don't understand. How am I supposed to learn if I don't read what other people think? That is part of learning, but you cannot pass of the words and ideas of others as your own. This is confusing. Let me help. According to the Merriam-Webster online dictionary, to plagiarize means to steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as one's own, or to present as new and original an idea or product derived from an existing source. In other words, plagiarism is an act of fraud. It involves both stealing someone else's work and lying about it afterward. Wow. I had no idea. But, can words and ideas really be stolen? According to U.S. law, 
The answer is yes. The expression of original ideas is considered intellectual property and is protected by copyright laws, just like original inventions. Almost all forms of expression fall under copyright protection as long as they are recorded in some way, such as a book or a computer file. So, would turning in someone else's work as your own be considered plagiarism? Yes. How about copying words or ideas from someone else without giving credit? Yes. Giving incorrect information about the source of a quotation? Yes. Changing words but copying the sentence structure of a source without giving credit? Yes. What if I give credit to sources, but still use so many words or ideas from a source that it makes up the majority of my work? Is that considered plagiarism? Yes. That falls under fair use. It is still plagiarism. The majority of your work should be your words and ideas. I had no idea so many things were considered plagiarism. I will work to make sure I do not plagiarize in my work. That is great, Mark. Right. Uh, so that give a brief overview of uh, what is plagiarism. Right. There are many form of plagiarism. It's not here. I'm going to give all the details, but. Uh, there are many examples of uh, plagiarism, copying others' work, which is the common form, using an idea or information without saying that uh, we have got from somewhere and copying directly from uh, uh, other source. And I mean, this, the same structure or same words, copying the same words, but without giving the quotation mark. And even the videos, images, what, right, photographs. You know, this is very common form of uh, plagiarism. A lot of people use the internet to, to get their uh, images from. And you see the, in my case, you can see even the video where I played, I have mentioned directly even the link here. And the definition of plagiarism, I got it from uh, uh, one of the presentation. So I have given the credit here. So I have avoided the plagiarism by doing that, right? So, <clears throat> right. So there are many examples of, uh, um, of plagiarism, right? But uh, the citing someone else's idea and discussing it, uh, Okay, uh, I heard that uh, my voice seat is not enough. Let me see, uh, just to increase a bit. Hope uh, much better now. If you can confirm. Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. So thanks for letting me know. So. <clears throat> So there are many examples of uh, plagiarism, right? And very common, we know the, we call the control C, this copy and pasting is very common form of uh, uh, plagiarism, uh, copying from the, the internet uh, and using another work, right? Even your parents' work, but you, without giving, even with the permission, right, you cannot, use it as your own, right? And uh, the other thing is using your own work without properly citing it, right? How can it be, right? Even if it is your work, if you have previously published it somewhere else, then still you have to say that, otherwise it becomes plagiarism, it's called a self-plagiarism, because any software that you use, it will be this as a plagiarism, right? So that's where you have to be very careful. Uh, plagiarism, right? Um, um, uh, nice, right? We need that, right? <clears throat> so, so that even your work, if it is previously published, then still you have to. Uh, cite it, otherwise it becomes self-plagiarism, right? Now, the, any 
quotation i mean if you use this uh, the whole text from a, a, a book or any publication then you have to give a quotation right even if you do cite it then you have to give quotation mark to show that it you have taken the exact the same wording right and citing sources you didn't use that also common in some cases right especially in the student assignment sometimes in the thesis you have hundreds of uh, references at the end but they have not been cited in the text or so there is no in text citation but there are large number of references at the end just to show the reader that you have read a lot but it has no any meaning everything in the reference list has to be in your uh, it has to be in the in text citation and everything in the in text citation has to be in your reference list and you have to check it vice versa that most of the students miss this one um, when they are submitting right so turning in the same paper more than one journal and this is also common form of a, a plagiarism especially in the papers you submit it to a, a, a different journals with uh, small changes sometimes so it is can be a really serious offense if caught right uh, you will have a lot of uh, punishment definitely it will be some advertise and even if you are coming from an institute head of the in institute will be informed about this kind of a plagiarism so it can be very serious but if the abstract it publish of course you can submit the full paper <clears throat> but uh, ethically if you have submitted the full paper which also included the abstract the submitting abstract is not really uh, ethically good because it's all the even the abstract has already been published in a full, full paper but the other way around it's fine because the abstract once published still you can uh, go for a full publication right so keep in mind these things right um, so there are many different forms of uh, plagiarism, uh, which I don't want to go into detail, but like a, like a cloning, right? just giving the like a exact copy of someone else's. I mean, this is very common in a student assignment. Perhaps you change the first page or the, the where they contain the, the name of the, the, the writer, and then you give the whole lot from someone else's and control C, find, replace, like, just change a couple of words here and there and remix is we like uh, take from different sources and to make it a single one and then for a reader at just looking at it doesn't feel like a copying but it is actually from a different sources right like is hybrid um, and it's combination like right? the perfect cited versus uh, the some information uh, copied likewise there are so many different versions, um, so um, you can read, read a little bit on this, right? <clears throat> now, the important thing is then how to avoid plagiarism, right? There are many different ways you can avoid plagiarism. Um, and the most important thing to avoid plagiarism is what we call in the academic writing is paraphrasing, right? I'm not too sure if you have heard this term. It's called the paraphrasing. Right? The, the paraphrasing means what you have to do is just read the, the other's work, get the meaning, and write it in your words. Right? You just get the meaning of out of the reading, and then you write it in, in your own words. And that is called the paraphrasing, and that is the best and uh, the way to avoid plagiarism, right? Right. <clears throat> um, of course, even you paraphrase, still you have to give the credit. I mean, uh, right. Um, <clears throat> and if you use the the uh, exactly same words like a definition or like someone else's work, it's if it is a poem or something, then you have to have it in the uh, quotation mark, right? And you have to avoid minor or the what we call the cosmetic changes i will give some examples later and this is very common you know you take a whole paragraph you copy paste some whole paragraph from the the other's work and you just do small changes here and there and and, and present it as yours but that also come under plagiarism um 
that can uh, easily detect, right? And <clears throat> even you do all these, right? Even if you do everything else uh, here mentioned, but still you have to give the in-text citation as well as list of reference. So you have to do the proper citation, right? Um, <clears throat> right. Um, now, for example, I have given one example here, right? Um, I think some of you have already used this kind of a quotation mark, but uh, you see when in your writing, so you have to use this kind of a proper format to give the quotation, right? You know, it's a, it, it, that quotation can be part of your writing, like in this case, so generally English for academic purpose covers those educational activities in higher education. You see this in here, we have the um, quotation mark and that refers or that indicate that this whole part is taken from someone else's work. And you have given the name, the year, as well as the, even the page number, uh, especially if you're using APS style, you have to give this format, right? Right, and many cases, the definitions, like uh, if you need some precise information, for example, in the laws, because you can't change the law. So then in that case, you have to use a, a quotation mark. Um, I think the social sciences and humanities is very common using this uh, quotation mark, but uh, in natural science, like in our writing, we, we uh, seldom use actually the quotations unless it's really necessary for definitions, right? Right. <clears throat> and how to avoid, if you need a little bit more, avoid poor paraphrasing. And then that is, as I mentioned before, the paraphrasing is the key. So you have to practice a lot how to do this para uh, paraphrasing and get the meaning right and write it in, in a, a proper way in your own words. So that is the best and, and, and way to avoid plagiarism, right? Um, right. But here, what is important here, right? You cannot change the meaning that the whole work will be lost. The whole purpose will be lost. So we have to get the meaning right first, and then you write it in your word, but keep the meaning that that's the important thing, right? Right. <clears throat> um, right. Okay. Um, Right, the references, as I mentioned before, you have to double check whether everything in this in-text citation in the references and everything in the references in the uh, in-text citation as well, right. And um, the, nowadays there are many software that, you, that uh, the institutes use for detecting plagiarism. Like I have listed some of those here, for example, plagiarism checker, wiper, like dupli checker, paper writer, and then even the Grammarly, you know, Grammarly is a more uh, language and style checking software. It is actually free for like, you know, you can download it or you can have it in your Windows uh, and even the Android, uh, but uh, there are limited uh, use in the, in the free version, but uh, full version, even you can go for plagiarism check. Uh, they have the facility. I mean, if you are writing, uh, I mean, scholars better have this kind of a software um, in your installed in your computer, and it will do a lot of correction. Even your email will be checked if you have installed Grammarly, and if you are not using Grammarly previously, think of that, and that will really make things easy. Whenever you write word or the English will be checked, in, and especially for the styles, right? And here the Turnitin is actually sort of a commercial software and it is a, an sort of an industrial standard software that is being used in a lot of institutes. Even in our university, um, even the GS is now using the uh, uh, Turnitin as their uh, uh, standalone software for detecting uh, uh, plagiarism. So um, I'm pretty sure, I mean, if you are not in the SJP, but still your institute, especially if you are in a, like a, a international universities, they all check for plagiarism. So you have to familiarize with the, uh, the software. 
Um, if you have time, I'll show some uh, examples of uh, how we can do plagiarism uh, detection. Um, what it actually do, whatever the software that you're using for the plagiarism detection, so they do some sort of a side by side comparison, right? So they do comparison with almost all, all the sources in the internet, whatever the publish in the internet or other online resources or other student um, uh, submissions and um, journals and databases, they look for where they have the similarities, right? It will highlight the which sentences, which paragraphs has been taken from and where, and it will show the color coded. You see, the same color will be shown if the 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 copied from the same resource, right? Not only that, it will show the percentage how much you have copied from each and every source, and even if you can click here and then it will directly go to the original source, right? So pretty much. Everything you can get from this uh, plagiarism um, detection software, right? And if you take the turn it in, and it will you see more than thirteen billion web pages, right? All the newspapers, magazine, books, and pretty much all the journal articles, student present, student submission, the everything will be um, there, and it will be checked for originality. It's called the originality check or originality report. And it will give what is the percentage and different sources, how much you have copied, as well as overall rating, how much the, the we call the similarity index or similarity rating, what the percentage actually you have copied. And <clears throat> you might have a question that what is the, the accepted percentage, whether it's 5%, 10%, 15, 20, 25. Of course, it depends on the institutes. Some institutes uh, allow up to 20%, some 15, some 10, right? Uh, some can be even stringent. So you have to check with your institutes uh, and especially with your supervisors uh, to check uh, actually what is the, the general rule in your um, institute, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, this is... Uh, a Grammarly example, actually, the I, ha, I have used this uh, for, for using the Grammarly, and then that also uh, give the overall score. Actually, this is the other way around. The seventy two it's, it's uh, the not the percentage actually, um, but uh, it will also highlight which sentences or which paragraphs has been taken from and where it is from, right? And this Viper actually used to be a free software, but not anymore. I, I'm not too sure it's now available, but uh, uh, you can uh, see they also highlight which sections has been taken uh, or copied. Like in this case, you see 51% copied from some, and this is actually uh, one of the student submissions. I checked for plagiarism, right? And it will give all the sources where they have copied, right? All right. so. <clears throat> That's about the the uh, turnitin. Uh, as you can see here, this is the um, my page in turnitin where I check the the plagiarism for. Um, you can see even some examples I have recently used for some of the, some of the research papers, uh, like percentage of uh, the uh, the similarity, thirteen fifteen, like. Twice, right? Um, so if you click this one, it will give all the information, right? So I don't want to uh, go into that detail, uh, but uh, <clears throat> this is important that uh, you have to check, right? So <clears throat> the paraphrasing, right? Um, so let's, since we have already speak for nearly right four to five minutes. Um, I have here a small exercise, right? I have given uh, a example paragraph here. It's a very short paragraph. Can you give a, a try to do a paraphrasing from this paragraph? 
I will give you two, one minute, two minutes, perhaps. Um, just read this one, take the meaning and write in it in your own words, right? So we'll give it a try. Right? And if someone can share with me uh, some of your writing, please. So don't take very serious, just try to uh, get the meaning and write it in your own words. If we have already done, can you share with us? Any volunteer here? So even if you can write, send me a private message, if you don't want to share to everybody. So I want to, Disclose your name. So in the chat window, just select uh, my name. Right, so we have a couple of, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I got a direct message as well as there is a <clears throat> one for everyone so that everyone can see that one, but there is a one uh, private message as well um, where it mentioned study shows that the lateness and stress associated work is much reduced when employees provided the facilities for child care. It's very good. Um, now that's the right, uh, the one shared for everybody. The other one, it is found that lateness and level of stress of employees <clears throat> decrease in workplace where child care services are provided, right? So it's very good. So, <clears throat> and that's an example Really good, thank you so much for being interactive. This is what expected, especially in this uh, online versions. Since uh, I cannot see any of you, I'm actually speaking to literally to a computer um, and a little bit interactive is always good. At least that will give a small break for me as well. Um, <clears throat> so it's very important. You need to get the meaning out of it here. That's, that you need to know. Um, now, the whole idea of this, uh, the paragraph is that if you provided a childcare facility in your workplace, that will reduce the, the lateness, right? Though the, the, the workers will be more punctual as well as they will be less stress. So that's the whole idea. And you have to put that one into a better way but not the same, using your words, not the same um, text that you read, right? So that's the, the whole concept here. Um, I think I have a few examples um, for like a suggestions here, the paraphrase version. 
there is evidence to suggest that on-site daycare is beneficial to employers because employees are more punctual and appear to suffer less stress, less from stress, right? So this is uh, how you can uh, uh, paraphrase it and still, you know, we have to provide the in-text citation and definitely we have to have the reference list as well. So, and there are many different ways you can put this in, a, uh, in, a, in, a, in your writing, you see, it can be part of your sentence, like you see, according to Smith, those employees who are provided with childcare, likewise, you can all the, you provided the, the, your writing and you can have the, the intake citation at the end, right? So there are many different ways you can put, you know, it's very important that you learn this paraphrasing because, you know, in writing, especially in the literature reviews and in the discussion, so if you follow the same format, like according to Smith, according to this, according to this, like you know, it's pretty boring for the reader. So that's where you have to use different styles. That's why I have given some examples here, right? Sir, you have, sorry, yes, sorry. yeah. So in the first and the second, I have to confuse always that according to Smith, then we have the yes, but how do we put the reference in that uh, end of the uh, uh, reference? So in the last one is automatically comes in the ABO, uh, uh, our style, Smith and 2012, it, we can just put it enter, right? Yeah. But in the first and second one, sir, how do we actually we get the reference list in the end of the study? Uh, you mean if you are using a, a software, is it? Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, I so we, we just write okay according to Smith 2012. Then yeah, that won't come end of the reference list, right? Ah, right, right. Yes, um, actually, uh, it depend on depends on uh, which software you are using. Um, not every software can do this kind kind of a customization. Actually, in the actually in the uh, if you are using N node, you know you can customize the outputs. Um, uh, if you have time, we will see uh, in the that customization. Actually, you can go for this. Uh, I mean, you can do that one. Um, I'm pretty sure not all software. I mean, especially the 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 free versions will not support that facility. In many cases, uh, actually, it will give a reference like this. But still, even I mean, you can still correct them manually. I mean, even if you use yeah. the yeah, yeah, it in yeah, at least you can do it manually. So thank you so much for bringing this out. Actually, um, uh, of course, in the end, not actually in the change in the output style, you can change it. You can customize uh, these things. Um, I, other softwares actually, I will I will check actually whether they have that facility. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> right, uh, uh, this is some examples, you know, um, like instead of using the proper uh, paraphrasing, this is most uh, uh, students, most scholars, they use, I mean, you know, cosmetic changes, as you can see, you know, just change words here and there and then trying to uh, show it as your own writing, you see this chart, you remove that one and you put it figure shows the decline in, instead of ocean, you put marine, like you, this kind of a thing we call the cosmetic changes. And these kind of a writing actually, uh, the software detects as the uh, plagiarism. I mean, if you are really very tactful, you might be able to avoid, um, uh, from the uh, the software, like sometimes in the you know some every three four word you change one word actually. Right in the earlier time, you know even the turn it in they you, they took uh, like a five word chunks. Like it, it check for like every five word chunks, and then if you change at least one or two words in that five words, so you can perhaps avoid the plagiarism. But the problem here is, I mean, if you are a scholar then you have to
to have consistency in your writing. And if you do this kind of a changes, your writing, the style won't be very consistent. And for the reader, it is very obvious. So that's where you have to use your own word, right? Then otherwise the different sections you're writing, you will have different styles, different uh, writing formats and which find it extremely difficult for the, the reader, especially like uh, if it is a thesis, the reviewer find it's extremely difficult to read because you are using so many different uh, formats, right? So, and you will get a minus or uh, bad reviews on this, you know, uh, especially the reviewers will have strong um, comments on these things, right? So that's where you have to be very careful, right? Uh, right. Uh, still, we have more, uh, some have shared uh, writings. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> right. So again, uh, some uh, plagiarized version with the small or cosmetic changes. You see, student frequently overuse, right? Student often use too many. So these kind of things, <clears throat> very common in student writings, <clears throat> but they are all uh, actually uh, plagiarized, right? All right, <clears throat> this is almost one hour gone. Uh, we are still uh, sort of giving background. So we will now really come to the, the topic. Uh, rather the most confusing topic for many of us, that is the citation styles, right? So for many of us, including myself, so the citation styles are really, really confusing, right? It is just because there are too many. You can't even imagine if you read as 10 articles, so the 10 articles will have 10 different versions of citations, right? The books, the magazines, they all have different formatting and which make it extremely difficult for, for us, especially when we are organizing our references, right? And this is even harder uh, because in many cases, uh, the students, the postgraduate students, they do, uh, the citations and the, the reference list towards the end of the writing. You know, they have no prior experience doing that. And, you know, you are towards the end, you are very busy or you have limited time to do. And when you are doing your references towards the end, then you are really struggling uh, because, you know, formatting is going to be a, a really big issue. And the other thing, um, you know, you provide, I mean, you write the best way you can and you give it to your supervisors and they change a lot. because Now already you have formatted your references, but the supervisor will cut out some of the parts. And now still, you know, that reference will be missing from the in-text citation, but you already have it in the reference list. Now you have to manually do it. And that's where we have to struggle. Um, and that's where actually we need to use the software to do these kind of things, <clears throat> right? So anyway, now let's talk about the citation styles. And though actually we talk about the so many different versions of citation styles, in reality, in overall, actually, there are three kind of citation styles actually. Actually, um, there are only three versions, right? So in terms of the, the, the versions, actually, the first one is called the Harvard style, right? Which is the, the most people I know use the Harvard style referencing. And then it is called as author date uh, system, right? Because we use the author, but that's the last name of the author or the authors, plus the date, the date is actually the, the year of publication. So we use the, the last name of the first author or the, the authors and the, 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 the year of publication. And this system we call the Harvard style, right? And all the, the other bibliographic styles, something like APA, MLA, 
and and many journals use or the even the the universities use some form of uh, uh, Harvard style referencing, right? So uh, that is the the first one, the Harvard style. Then the second one is called the Vancouver or numbered system, right? So this is the second type of citation style, the Vancouver or the number style. So so in this case. So in-text citation is a number, right? Is a, a, the number uh, in a sequence order. Uh, and the reference, the full reference is given at the end with that number, right? In this case, I have given an example here. Uh, the reference to this one is given number one and that number in the reference list, number one is given and with the full reference, right? So, so that is the Vancouver type reference style and that's number system, right? Then the third type is the footnotes, right? So um, many magazines, even some humanities, they, it's common that they use the footnotes. I mean, maybe in your field, you might be using the footnotes. It's very rare in a natural sciences that we do, but still a lot of people use the footnotes. So here you usually use a superscript number. So it's a numeric reference in in-text citation and the, the citation, the full citation is given in the bottom of the page with that number, right? So, so that is the footnote, right? So I hope you have seen all these three different types of uh, uh, citation styles, right? Now, <clears throat> then how come there's only three types? Why we have so different versions? So that is actually the confusing thing for all of us. So, because different institutes, different journals, right, different um, um, people use different versions of these three, right? Because they might be highlighting different things. You know, for someone, it's the author's name is important. For someone, it is the year of publication, it's important. For someone, especially in the humanities, it's the most important is the page number where the, the source is, the, right? Because if it is like a Shakespeare's work or something, you just need to highlight in, or you just refer to the, that page they are talking about. So in some references, instead of giving the year of publication, they give the page number, like the author's name and year of the, the, the page number. Right. That's where they have prioritized different things. And that's where you get different versions. Right. So um, it's all depend on the what is expected from that particular institute or the particular journal or whoever the expecting the writing. Right. So that's where we have this confusion, uh, different formats. Right. I hope this is clear. Now, um, uh, again, there is a, a small video. Let's uh, see that one too. Before coming into the the um... when I started writing essays, uh, I had no. It's okay. I think uh, we can uh, pass that one. If you have time, uh, we'll come back to that one. Now, <clears throat> um, what is important here? Um, no matter what kind of a style is there. Right, what style is there, but there is some sort of a same anatomy or same sort of a information, more or less, same information in any kind of a style. That is the important thing, you know. The author's name, author, one author, or if there is many authors, the name of the author or the authors, the year of publication, the title, the full title, the 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 source whether it's a periodical book or what is the source, if it is journal, then the volume number. Volume is how many years that has been, right? You know, it's a volume number, like even the newspapers, they have a volume. So that give uh, idea about the, how long it has been in the, in the, it has been publishing for how many years, right? So in this case, it's, it has been now 28 years by 2015, right? 
and this issue is how many issues per year right it's 28 years now this is the first in that year right so that is the the year and the issue now then the page numbers and most of the recent publications they have something called um, doi right it's called digital object identifier um, doi and this is very important you know the the problem you know it's something like a url but the problem is url is you know urls it it might it might be changing you know it might be host somewhere else or they, they might change the url so that's why if you find it extremely difficult to find that so that's why they use doi and that is universal no matter where you publish so you, you can um, uh, trace that one right so that's where they use this doi the digital object identifier is very important right um, so what i'm trying to say is no matter what style they have at least this common information everywhere right uh, so it's matter of which way you organize in some styles the the publication date or the year is goes to end right and then um, and a source may be italic or not right um, sometimes they use the abbreviations for the source right so all these depend on the the source but the all this information will be there um, the whatever the styles in many different um, styles right okay so this is an example of a harvard system or the author date system uh, this is the full uh, citation uh, in example for the, the um, harvard style and this is the index citation index citation in the here and the here you see the uh, numbered style uh, uh, example from Vancouver. As you can see here, they are numbered sometimes with the uh, brackets, right? So all dip depend on the, the, the format. Uh, and you have seen, you can see that this is uh, highlighted in blue because they have hyperlinked. You know, it's, if it is uh, like in the word or even the online, you just click here and you can go to the reference directly. That, that's why they have hyperlinked. Even some, uh, in most of the recent publications actually, uh, these author names or the, the index citation are actually hyperlinked. You just need to click and it will di direct you to the citation. Right? Even the like word, you can have these hyperlinks. Uh, right? so, <clears throat> so that is example from uh, uh, Vancouver. And, and this is the reference list where with the number, with the appropriate number, number 14 here, and you have the full reference uh, in the reference list. And so these numbers are in the order as they appear in the text, right? So they have to be in this right order. Now, again, the problem here, you know, when you do it, this numbering, uh, towards the end, when you have to do editing, as the supervisor suggests, or even the reviewers will suggest to remove some of the part of your sentence. And then your reference will be, has to be removed from the, uh, the index. Then now still your full reference will be in the reference list. Now this is where we have to struggle if you don't have the software to use and you have to do it manually, right? But it is important, you know, um, no matter you have software or not, before submitting, you make sure that you check each and every index citation and reference, reference list. And this is a common mistake that most students make, right? No matter you how good you are writing, you're done everything good, your research good, you, you have maybe publication, but still you forget to check this one. Um, the in-text citation and the reference list. There are a lot of missing citation in the, in the references or some of the uh, excess citations in the, in the reference, if references, which has not been uh, cited in the in-text. 